I'm Mike Farrington, welcome back to my shop. In this video, I'm going to tackle three beginner CNC projects. I picked up this CNC a few months back. It came as a kit and was delivered on two pallets. I put it together and I started playing around with it. I'd like to mention at this point that going into this, I really knew very little about CNC machines, and to top it off, I'm not good with computers. So I had a pretty steep learning curve in front of me. Well, after working through the process of designing something, loading material onto the machine, and loading a program into the machine, I can say that I've become moderately somewhat confident in operating this CNC machine. So why does it look like I'm taking it apart? Well, one of the advantages of this kit style of machine is it's adjustable. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually moving the front rail back a few inches to make way for a vertical clamping table, which I'll use later in the video to cut the box joints on the toy boxes I made for my little crumb crunchers. Oh yeah, girl, you know it. After making the necessary adjustments to the front rail, I zeroed out the machine and wrote a quick program to cut a rectangle out of the front of the spoil board. And I must admit, my hand was covering the emergency stop button the entire time. It felt weird to be cutting my CNC with my CNC. That and the final pass was going to get precariously close to a couple metal parts. I wrote the program so the CNC wouldn't cut all the way through, so I came back with a handsaw to finish off the rest of the cut. At this point, the modifications to the machine are all done, so I switch gears and I make a quick vertical clamping table. I figured this would be a first draft, so I didn't put a ton of thought or time into it. My goal was just to get a surface that functioned, not build the best one that's ever been made. I'm using this Nido Mosquito dovetail bit to cut these slots, and they match up with some clamps that have the same shape, and I'll show that in just a minute. Here's a close-up of the clamps and how they work with the slots. This is a great system with a wide variety of applications, which I guess we call those apps these days. I use it a few places around the shop. Have a look at the video description if you'd like more info. I think all businesses should have some signage. So that's the first project, a sign that does two things. It clearly states the name of my shop, and it also removes all doubt about how cheesy my sense of humor is. Each time I use this CNC, it's just a question of which mistake I make. In this case, I forgot to turn on the dust collector. And I should have cut the sign out first and then cut out the perimeter. I did not reverse order here. This would have yielded a better finished result because the piece would have been held more securely during the cut. I used VCarve Pro to design the sign. I sized it to fit on one of the vertical boxes in my shop that I used to run dust collection and electrical in. I'm using plywood with a cherry veneer over top of MDF. And for those who don't know, MDF stands for Medium Density Farrington. Here's a look at a router bit that should have been thrown away long ago. It's known as a flush cut bit and I used to remove the remainder of the tabs. And tabs are just the little bits of material used to hold the workpiece while it's being cut. Up to this point, I thought the project looked just okay. I decided to hit it with some good old fashioned rattle can lacquer and have a look at her. With a little finish, the cherry really looks nice against the MDF. I don't think you'll see this inside a swanky steak restaurant anytime soon, but for a shop project, I think it looks pretty neat. At 
The second project is a pair of poster frames, one for Ron Swanson and one for Jeffrey Lebowski, also known as the Dude, or El Dude Areno, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. The frames will be machined on both sides. I needed a way to cut, flip the workpiece, and put it back in the exact same spot, so I ended up cutting a quarter inch groove in a 90 degree shape, and then I squished some quarter inch MDF into that groove, and voila, a repeatable work stop. For this project, I'm going to use two different bits, a quarter inch upcut spiral bit and a 90 degree V bit. Starting with the V bit, I zero out the height and manually locate and zero the corner of the workpiece. Amongst other things, V bits are great for carving letters, which in this case I'll turn into learned words from a couple of wise dudes. With the wizened words carved in stone, I flip the workpiece and begin the machining on the back. I'm going to cut a small rabbit for the poster to mount to, and I'm going to cut the opening to turn a rectangle of wood into a frame. And right here you can see the workpiece lift off the table. Same mistake as before, I should have cut the rabbit first. But I cut the through cut first, and this ultimately weakens the workpiece, allowing it to be flexible and then lift off of the table. What amazes me, though, is the lifting force created by a quarter inch upcut spiral bit. I fixed this programming mistake for the second frame, and as you can see here, the results are much better. The workpiece is held firmly in place. With the overwhelming success of the finish on the last project, I decided to go with the same on this one. I mounted the posters to some 1 8 inch MDF with some spray adhesive, then I pinned them into place into the CNC'd rabbits. The final project, and certainly the most complex, is a pair of toy boxes for my kiddos. My hope is that these useful boxes will inspire my kids to clean up every single toy after each and every use. So we'll see if that happens, but I'm optimistically bullish. Once again, I used V-Carve for this project. I started by drawing the various shapes, the handles, the dados, the perimeters. I used those shapes to generate tool paths for the CNC machine to follow. V-Carve allows you to run a simulation, which I find extremely helpful. Then I load the CNC with materials and programs and get to work. I have the dust boot removed just so the cutting action is more visible. One of the things many CNC users will say is while the machine is up and running, that's a great time to do other things in the shop. And you know what? I couldn't agree more. I did a much better job of programming this project. I started with the handles, cut those first, then moved on to the dados for the bottoms. Finally, I cut out the perimeters. Meanwhile, I'm still sawing wood while the CNC is doing all the cutting. Here's the final result of my vertical clamping table for this project anyway. I ended up adding a few parts that act as a reference as well as support the work pieces. It's a little rudimentary, but it worked well enough. To cut the box joints, I drew a series of rectangles right next to each other. I set up a toolpath to cut out the inside of every other one. I cut odds on one part, and then I cut evens on the other, if that makes sense. I don't know if this is a good way to do it or not, but it was all I could come up with, and in the end, it worked tip-top, Tommy. Totally 
I have a layer of one quarter inch MDF on either side sandwiched around two half inch Baltic birch box parts. I did this to reduce tear out. I subtracted a roundover from the handle openings to make sure they were nice to the touch. While machining these box joints, I learned that four thousandths is not enough clearance for the parts to fit together easily. Everything went together, but it was a tight friction fit. I decided to use polyurethane glue because it's not water-based. As such, parts won't swell when the glue is applied further reducing that four thousandths clearance. Also, polyurethane glue has a lovely lubricity, which helps tight-fitting parts slip-slide together. Oh, and by the way, Lovely Lubricity is going to be the name of my new band. After a bunch of malleting and plenty of clamps, I was able to get the joints to come together. We'll call it good enough. Might as well shoehorn a song recommendation in here as well. Cherub Rock by the Smashing Pumpkins takes me back to high school, and it's a great song. Now it's time for a pro tip. We've all had squeeze out rear its ugly head when applying a finish. These little bits of glue that find their way into an area that's impossible to sand ends up leaving a huge contrast when the finish is applied. Well, here's a reason to use polyurethane glue. Squeeze out becomes a non-issue when the finish to be applied is polyurethane. As it turns out, both polyurethane glue and polyurethane the finish are made out of polyurethane. So when they dry, they are nearly identical in appearance. I apply two coats finish, the first coat's full strength, then a good hand sanding, the second coat is thinned about 50-50, and I pay close attention and brush as evenly as I can on the second coat. So that's it, three fun and easy CNC projects completed by this beginner.